dear students, today I am going to talk about conflicts. In the previous class, I have discussed about some of the attributes that is required for a project manager. In that, one important attribute is having conflict resolving skills. So, in this lecture, we are going to study in detail about conflicts. Remember, in the last class, I discussed about managing for stakeholders. This class, we are going to discuss about resolving conflicts that is very important skill required for a project manager. So, the agenda for this lecture is, I am going to say what is conflict and categories of conflict. Then, how the conflict occurs different stages of the project life cycle. Next, I am going to discuss about how to resolve, how to deal with the conflicts. We are going to study about two techniques. First, I will define what is the conflict the process which begins when one party perceives that other has frustrated some concerns of his. That is the definition of conflict. Our concern is goal conflict that occur when a group pursues goals different from other groups. There are two groups, but the goal is common, but the two groups perceive that goals in different perspective that lead to conflict. So, to resolve that conflict, we need to have the skill called the negotiation. The skills required to resolve most conflict is called negotiation. Now, we will discuss about categories of conflict. There are three sources, we can say categories and sources of conflict. The first source is different goals and expectations, same group but they have different goals and different expectation that lead to conflict. The second source for the conflict is uncertainty about authority, whether this work should be done by person X or person Y. So, that is the uncertainty about the authority. So, that leads to conflict. The last and important source for conflict is interpersonal conflict. Now, we will discuss the categories of conflict in detail. As I told you, the first category is different goals and expectation. Some conflicts happen as day to day work on projects is usually carried out by many different units of the organization that often differ in their objectives and technical judgments. These units have different expectation about the project, its cost, rewards and relative importance and timings. So, this different expectation leads to conflict. Conflict about schedules, intra and inter project priorities, cost estimates and staff time tend to fall into this category. At base, they arise because the project manager and the functional managers have different goals. The project owner and the project managers concern is the project. Now, there are different perspective on the objectives, so goals. So, that lead to conflict. The second source of the conflict is uncertainty about authority. Other conflict reflect the fact that both technical and administrative procedures are important aspects of project management. Uncertainty about who has the authority to make the decisions on resource allocations administrative procedures, communication, technological choices and all other matters affecting the project produces conflict between the various stakeholders. Whenever there is uncertainty about authority, then that leads to project conflict. That uncertainty is due to resource allocation, who should allocate the resources. Then what are the administrative procedures, communications? These are the sources of conflict that arise due to uncertainty about authority. It is simple enough and correct to state that the functional manager controls who work on the project and make the technical decisions, while the project manager controls the schedule and flow of work. In practice, 
amid the days countless little crises faced by the project and functional managers alike, the distinction is rarely clear. Because since there are so many activities are taking place, the, the rules and responsibilities, authorities of the project manager and the functional manager is very small. So, that lead to conflict. Another source of conflict is interpersonal conflict. While cooperating with many persons, it seems inevitable that the some personalities will clash. When there is a different opinion with the different personalities, so that lead to conflict. Also, in conflict between the project and senior management, it is the project manager who personifies the project and thus is generally a party to the conflict. Because the important skill for a project manager is interpersonal skills. If there is a good interpersonal skills, then this conflict can be that is interpersonal conflict can be minimized. Now, we will see that project conflicts by category and stakeholders. You see there are different stakeholders, one is project team. So, project team they may have conflicts on with respect to goals, they can have conflicts on schedules and priorities. Then about authority, there may be a technical issues that may lead to conflicts. So, the project team members there may be different people have different personal feelings. So, that lead to personality. So, that is the interpersonal conflict. Then the functional and senior management, they may have conflicts due to schedule and priorities. So, that conflicts are comes under categ category of goals related conflicts. Then the functional and senior management may have conflict on technical and administrative responsibilities. So, that comes under category of authority related conflicts. Then the personality issues will be will be there between functional and senior management that comes interpersonal category of conflict. The external stakeholders, there may be conflicts due to labor cost and priorities. Then there may be a conflict due to administrative responsibilities. So, that was the authority category of conflict. Now, I will discuss about conflict and project life cycle because the conflict may occur different stages of project life cycle. For example, during the project formation stage, how the conflict can occur? So, conflict centers around the confusion of starting a new project. Generally, in the project formation stage, whether this project should be started or not started, that itself leads to conflict. Many of the policies and procedures have not yet been formed at the project formation stage. So, that lead to conflict and the objectives of the projects are not yet finalized. This is also another reason for the conflict during the project formation stage. So, in this stage that is a project formation stage, conflict cannot be avoided at this phase. In fact, much of this conflict is good conflict because if you are able to solve the conflict at the project formation stage, you need not carry that conflict into the another stage of project life cycle. So, it is better to have more conflict during the project formation stage. So, once it is solved that need not be carried to another stage of the project life cycle. So, handling project formation conflict, if any conflict occurs during project formation stage, how to handle that? There are four fundamental issues that must be handled to get order. First one is the technical objective must be set, especially during the project formation stage. If you fix the technical objectives, then many conflicts can be minimized. And the second point is the senior management and the line managers must commit to the project. If you sincerely commit to the projects, many of the conflict will be resolved. The third point is that the organization structure of the project must be established. There should be a proper organization structure 
because if when there is a proper organization structure, the authority is clearly defined who should do what work. If there is no proper organization structures, there are many conflict due to authority, who will do what work. The last point is the priority of the project must be set. What are the first priority? What is the second priority? That has to be set. So, that will reduce lot of conflict during the project formation stage. Now, we will discuss the conflicts during project build up stage. In this stage, conflict tend to be technical in nature. Conflict between the project manager and the functional areas tend to predominate. Now, we will discuss about the conflict during the main program of the project life cycle. Here schedules are a major source of conflict during the main stage of the project or program. The schedule is the main source for the conflict because many time it because there is a very crucial during this time to meet the schedule. Some task will be late and the schedule should be adjusted or the time should be made up. The more complex the project, the more difficult it is to trace the source of conflict during the main program stage. There are also technical conflicts during the main stage of the project or program. The next point is conflict during the project phase out last stage. So, in this stage the conflicts are mainly due to deadlines. So, deadlines are a major source of conflict. Another point is the technical problems are rare because your project is almost to complete. Personality conflicts will be a big deal due to time pressure. So far we have discussed about what are the sources of conflict in different stages of project life cycle. Now I am going to discuss about how to deal with the conflict. People deal with the conflict along with the two, two dimensions. One is assertiveness, second one is cooperative. So, a person may be assertive or unassertive that is a one scale or the person may be cooperative or uncooperative. So, this is the another scale. So, in these two scales we are going to suggest some conflict resolution techniques. Before going to that I will discuss what is assertiveness and assertiveness of solving the problem. Here assertiveness is the quality of being self assured and confident without being aggressive to defend a right point of view or a relevant statement. You may be very clear on our point, but you need not be aggressive on that. So, that quality is called assertiveness that is very important quality for a project manager that is required for resolving conflict. Now, look at there are five strategies for resolving conflict. So, in the horizontal axis I have taken cooperative on the extreme right side and uncooperative. In the vertical axis assertiveness at the top and the unassertiveness at the bottom. There are five strategies one is competing is one strategy, then avoiding is another strategy, accommodating is another strategy, collaborating is another strategy and compromising is the another strategy. I will discuss about these strategies in detail. First one is competing, when to compete with other person, when there is a conflict, whether we really have to compete with that person or that issues. So, look at the figure, approaching a situation assertively and being willing to cooperate is referred to as competing strategy. So, this strategy. So, competing is a person is uncooperative at the same time he is assertive. Look at the figure approaching a situation assertively and being unwilling to cooperate is referred to as competing strategy. He is very stubborn on cooperation, he is not willing to cooperate. So, with that fellow we have to compete. When a competing strategy is employed, the person views the situation as though someone must lose for the other to win or in this case I win you lose 
that is a win lose strategy competing strategy is win lose one person is winning in that process other person will lose we call it is zero sum game in game theory so this competing strategy may be appropriate when the decision must be made quickly the second strategy is avoiding the strategy the person is uncooperative but unassertive so alternatively when the position is not asserted aggressively but the person is still unwilling to cooperate we have a conflict avoiding strategy so we have to avoid that conflict because he is not assertive also and he is not cooperative also there won't be any harm for you so we can avoid that conflict this is a loss loss strategy because you are not cooperating with the other person to help them achieve their goal nor you are actively pursuing your own goals this strategy might be applied when the issue is not that important to you or you deem the detrimental effect of the conflict outweigh the benefit of the resolving the issue in a desirable way the next strategy is collaborative this stage a person is cooperative and he is assertive when you assertively state your position but do so in a spirit of cooperation you are employing collaborating strategy here your focus is on achieving your goals but with the recognition that the best solution is one of the benefits for both the parties most of the time this strategy is preferred because both are benefiting out of this solution so that solution is called collaborating strategy for resolving the conflict thus the collaborating strategy can be considered considered a win win strategy it is a preferred strategy in most situation and particularly in situation where the needs of both parties are important so the next strategy is accommodating that is a person is highly cooperative but unassertive in situation when you do not assert your position and focus on cooperating with the other party you employ an accommodating strategy in this case the focus is on resolving the issue from the other person's point of view here the situation can be described as i lose you win or lose win strategy it would be appropriate to employ the accommodating strategy when you are wrong or the issue is much more important to the other person finally we discuss about the another important strategy called compromising when you take a middle ground position on both the dimensions you are compromising that is the middle ground position both on cooperation and assertiveness in this case nobody wins and nobody loses thus you have likely arrived at a solution that you and other party can live with but are not particularly happy about that you might employ a compromising strategy when the potential benefits of trying to develop a win win solution are exceeded by the cost the value of this framework is it helps us to recognize that there are alternative strategies that can be utilized to resolve the conflict successful project management requires that when conflict arises the situation is carefully evaluated and the approach for managing the conflict is proactively chosen in a way that the best enhances the quality of the relationship between the parties the purpose of the framework which i discussed earlier is to identify the right strategy so that the both the parties are fulfilling their requirement the another technique for resolving the conflict is pareto optimal solution so pareto optimal solution to the two party conflict and discuss the nature of bargaining process 
required to reach optimally a complex and time consuming process. Look at the figure on the right hand side, there is a 2 function 1 function 2. So, this boundary right this boundary is called Pareto front. So, all the points on this boundary is called Pareto optimal solution. If you go away from this boundary either side then it will become non optimal solutions. For example, if you take this position so the person f 1 should take this stand and f 2 should take this stand then only it is benefit for both the persons. If you go outside or inside this curve then there is a loss for one person. So, this type of solution is called Pareto optimal solution. For example, if you want to buy a car you may have objectives such as low price and high fuel efficiency, good safety rating and so on. A Pareto optimal solution is a car that has the best possible combination of these objectives such that you cannot find another car that is cheaper, more efficient or safer without compromising on some other objectives. The picture which is showing on this slide we consider only 2 criteria, criteria 1 and criteria 2. If there are more than one crit more than these 2 criteria that cannot be shown in the 2 dimensional figure. So, any solution if you say it is a Pareto optimal solution if you go away you cannot find the another alternative that satisfies your expectation. If you go away from that point you have to compromise on other objectives. So, approaching intra project conflict with a desire to win a victory over the other parties is inappropriate. So, we have to see that both are both the expect both the parties expectations are fulfilled in that situation we should go for this Pareto optimal solutions which is beneficial to both the persons. The project manager must remember that he or she will be negotiating with the project stakeholders many times in the future. If he or she conduct a win lose negotiation and the other party loses from then on he or she will face a determined adversary who seeks to defeat him or her this is not helpful. So, always we should prefer win win negotiation. If you go for win lose negotiation because you are you are going to spend lot of time with that other parties. So, that will give you a very bad effect in future that is why always it is recommended do not go for win lose negotiation you should prefer win win negotiation because you have to travel along with the other parties. In this lecture I have discussed about the conflict and different categories of conflict that is the sources of the conflict. Then I have connected conflict with the project life cycles. The next I discussed about how to deal with the conflict. I have explained two methodology, two techniques. One is a framework. In that I have discussed about five strategies for resolving the conflict. Next I have discussed about Pareto optimal solution. That is another way to resolve the conflicts. Thank you.